up in the concrete jungle. Everything is broke. Your passion be the healer. If you get in Brandon, Apollo and I connected. I had a, we had hot Rashid Hadi and I had a show in Detroit, and I DM'd Apollo like we in a, we in town. He came in like ten minutes. It's like he was already on his way. So he came. He rocked out. I think I was. You was on your way already? Yeah, yeah. Came, he was there in like 10 minutes. Had another show like two weeks later. It was a span we were rocking Detroit. Like we did like three shows in three in two months. He came to that show, he rocked out, and then he was just saying like he had something for me to hop on, but he had this album to do with Raheem Devon. When that album came out, uh put the Stally album out, Shea Noir album out, and he DM'd me one day and was just like, you know, let's let's make this classic. You know what I mean? And he, yeah. I believe he had already approached Hadi and, you know, they spoke about it, which was an honorable thing to do. And got the beats, went up to Detroit, came back, just went zero, zero dark 30 mode. And then, you know, I just blacked out, wrote the records, went back. We had 24 hours, 24 hours to do the record. And uh, I did, was that six records? I did ten records in six hours. Let me let me back it up. Back yeah, it up. Yeah. Back it up. So, first of all, me and Heidi go back. We go way back, and I've I've always been a big fan of, of Heidi, man, and and um, you know I let him know that continuously. But anybody that that Heidi messes with, I know they 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 proper. You know what I'm saying? So, I remember when um, I first uh, caught when. Of Fillmore, I think it was the um, the Third World City album, and I picked that up. And I know Rashid uh, produced all, if not most, of that. Um, checked it out, and I'm like, "Oh, who's, who's this dude, Fillmore Green, man?" You know what I'm saying? And everybody knows I don't work with anybody I'm not a fan of. Period. So if I work with you, if we if we do music, we we make any type of music, whether it's a song or an album, right? Um, it's because I, I rock with you, you know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fan. So uh, fast forward a little bit, I got in contact with him. Told him told him my ideas, told him what I wanted to do. But then, like he said, I got in contact with, with, with Rashid ID too, because well, ID was he was the one working with him. He ID was his sound, still is his sound. You know what I'm saying? He's the one that's kind of molded his sound. And uh, I didn't want ID to think I was poaching his artist. You know what I'm saying? It's not his artist, and you know, we don't have artists as producers, but you know, this is the guy he was working closely with. You know what I'm saying? And and uh kind of uh kind of cultivating, man. So um I hit him up and was like, yo, man, would you mind, you know, if 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 I worked with uh with Fillmore, man? And like you said, I I thought that was the honorable thing to do, man. Yeah. It's kind of like asking, you know, a woman's uh father for her her hand in marriage, you know what I'm saying? One of those things. I don't just, you know, I, I want to make sure everything's right and everything's on the up and up when I do things. So um, anyway, like he said, you know, I met him up at a show. Um, you know, we talked for a little bit. It was another show that he had with uh, with Sky Zoo and Elzai. They came into town, um, talked to him, told him, like, yo, this is what I want to do. Uh, we can't do it right this minute. But when we both got a window, you know, let's uh, let's work on something. And um, he was down, and then uh, shortly thereafter, man, we started uh, started planning this album, you know, and the rest is history, man. Here we are. Here we are. Cost of living. Cost of living, yeah. By the time this come out, it should be out. You, you know, it was a great process creating the cost of living, creating cost of living with Apollo Brown. You know, Apollo Brown's been all over the world, you know. He don't like to hear it, but he's been all over this world, man, putting his stamp over the world. You know, and it's an honor, you know, that sound he brought. He, His interpretation in Chicago was spot on, you know. Everything from everything on this project was to a T, you know, and I, I knew I had to get very detailed, the most detail I ever got on an album on this project because the beats brought that out of me, you know. But it was, it's, just, it's an honor to work with both of the guys, Rashid Hadi and Apollo Brown, you know, that all of this cultivated through them. You know, creating an album, creating cost of living, man, you know, and, and, and getting to work closely with Fillmore, you know, instead of just learning who he was as an MC, man, I got to learn who he was as a person. 
And when I work with people, man, it's I like to get to know the person. I, I like to get to know the human being, man, and and know who I'm giving my music to. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Who I'm working with closely. You know, I don't. I, you know, ain't no fun working with assholes, man. And it's no fun working with, you know, people who are not genuine, you know, or people that you just don't vibe with. Exactly. So getting to know him as a person um, and, 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 and creating these conversations that don't even revolve around music, you know, and talking about our lives and, you know, our families and, and our kids and, you know, that, that right there, man, I just... I like genuine people, man, and that's what I like to learn about. You know, not only the people that I work with, but this man right here is a good human being. So I would say that right there, man. I definitely learned a lot about him as a person. Not only, you know, the fact that he's an amazing MC, um, very prompt, very uh, professional in the studio. He knows that time is money. You know, he knows that, uh, you know, when we in the studios, it's work, you know. We could play after the studio, but it's work in the studio. We get it We're done, in that party knock it out. There's no party. Yeah, no, this is work. No uh, confetti coming from the motherfucking roof. It's, nah, it's, man, it's all work. It's work. Yeah. So and we got it done, and we got it done beautifully. What I learned working with Brother Apollo on Cost of Living, you know, like, like, to piggyback off what he said, you know, just be, learning them as a person. You know what I mean? Anytime someone take you to their home. You know, you meet their family. That says a lot. You know, a lot of people just don't walk past the threshold. So that opened up another layer. You know what I mean? Like, he trusts me and my guys enough to bring him into his home. You know, to chat with him and to see how he's living and where he creates his, his you know, his, his life. That's his livelihood. You know, and as far as the studio goes and when it comes to a, the approach to music, I learned to be more detail oriented. You know what I mean? Like as far as the way I write my albums now in the phone, I, I title everything. I don't just create shit. I title it and I create that, that folder for that album and it goes straight to that. And I learned that from Apollo because he's so detail oriented. He's organized. Otherwise any other time I'd be all over the place, you know, looking through my notes, 500 notes and shit just going to look for records nah I, I put them in a certain spot i know it's there um the way i record i learn that you know don't overlay you know I, I i pay attention to detail and i learn to be more detail oriented through apollo because he's a very from the beats he chose for me he's a very detailed person you know what i mean that's a good trait to have because you know we all need that in our life for real 